Hi guys, my name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is going to be about keywording. It's not sexy, but it's a necessity. I'm going to start with the preferences. I'm on a Mac. That will be Command, Comma on a Mac or Control, Comma on a PC. Off we go. Under Interface, we have Keyword Entry. Separate keywords using commas. Spaces are allowed in keywords. What does that mean? That means if you typed New York, you could put a comma after it and it's one keyword. The two words become one. Very straightforward, my preferred method. The next method is spaces. Single keyword, space. Single keyword, space. Double keyword, New York. You have to put it in quotes. Single or double, it doesn't matter. So comma, is a lot easier to remember and it will cause you the least amount of problems. A lot of people often wonder why their keywords get truncated without even looking here first. So be aware that your settings here will affect the way you keyword. I don't know what's on by default, but check it for yourself. Right, if I close that down, I'm gonna go straight to keywording here. Now I'm gonna give a quick overview. You enter your keywords here you can have keyword suggestions, which are suggested by Lightroom based on an algorithm, which I don't know how it works exactly, but every image you click on, it will probably have different keywords there. Based on the keyword you've got already in the images, probably, I'm only guessing that. Keyword set. Well, keyword sets are as they sound. I don't know how many you can have, but it's nine keywords in each set. I don't know if there's a limit to the amount of sets you can have, but I hardly ever use it now because my keyword list is as good as it's gonna get. So I did use it initially, I hardly touch it now. Keywording list, that's the list of all your keywords. You will see I have a hierarchical structure, i.e. there's placeholders at the top like places, underneath there's a tree structure, and underneath a broad, let's say there's Asia, and so it goes on. So that's a hierarchical structure. You can have a flat structure where you just throw all the keywords in. There's nothing wrong with that, but as far as your eye goes, having it nested like this would be a lot easier to manage. And it leads to more consistency as well. So it's entirely up to you, but I prefer having a hierarchical structure. You'll probably start off by throwing everything into the one pot, but then when you've got a bit of time, sit down and give it some structure and give some thought to how you want to keyword your images, then stick to that one method. Anyway, that's it really for what you can do with keywords here. Obviously, I'm going to cover it in more detail in a minute. Under metadata, you have set keyword shortcut. And currently it's bush. It could be anything I liked. I could uh, put in uh, sunset, let's say. And as you can see, the autocomplete did some work for me there. Press set and it's been set. Now, what does that mean? I can add that keyword shortcut to any image by toggling it here or using the keyboard shortcut shift K, which is much, much simpler to do. So if I wanted to add it to this photograph now, all I have to do is shift K and it's removed it. So you're toggling it on and off. I must have added it previously. Shift K again. So shift K and it's assigned the keyword sunset back to the image. I don't actually want it in the image because it wasn't the sunset. It was midday. There you go. Now, the other thing to note is enable painting that will allow you to spray keywords onto your images in the grid. It can be quite useful, but it can also be quite dangerous because it's like killing a fly with a shotgun. I will show it to you, obviously. Keyword sets. The keyword sets I've just showed you on the right there. Um, you can edit them here or edit them down there on in the right hand panel. Right. Import keywords. Uh, sometimes people in the scientific field will have set keywords, you know, like bird names, then the Latin name, etc. And botanists and all sorts of people will have set keywords. Some people sell their keyword sets. And I think that's a bit, well, a bit pointless because you'll have a massive database of words that you would hardly ever use. It's best to form your own organically. That's my opinion. So you can import them there and find them on the web and import them. You can export them and give them to someone else. Uh, very altruistic. And I would probably do that to a fellow landscape photographer who's just moved to where I live. Why not? Anyway, that done. There's purged unused keywords. Any keyword that is not in an image, embedded in an image, 
will be got rid of, deleted. So you're purging them out. So it's often very useful because you'll have, often have a lot of finger trouble and cre create keywords that just don't exist. Uh, names that don't exist, I mean, don't make sense. I'll give you an example of that. If I enter a keyword here, I'll put seven sisters in because that's where this picture was taken. Now I've gone, I've pressed return, I've gone back into the keyword box. Now let's say I've finished keywording and I want to do something else. I want to press G to go back to the grid. Right, straight away I've entered, uh, nearly entered a word into that keyword box. And it will bite you on the backside occasionally this. So my suggestion is press escape when you finish and you'll go out or click on something else. It's one of those little, it's not a glitch really because it needs to know you've finished with the, the keyword in box or just press escape. I often press escape. So you can add keywords here. So what other keywords would I like on this? Well, this is where it comes down to you. Well, what else can I put on this? Let's say a keyword I haven't got. I could put cliff. No, maybe I have got cliff. Let's see if I got that. Yes, I have. I've got cliff there. So I've added cliff to it. I know I shot it with a circular polarizer. So why not put that, um, that in? There you go. Press return. Got it in there. Now, when you use the drop down and go keywords and containing keywords, You'll get everything associated with those keywords, the hierarchical structure, but shown to you in alphabetical order. Um, it's not that useful. We'll export, this is useful, and this is what will export out when I export this out of Lightroom. Circular Polarizer, Cliff, East Sussex, England, Seven Cities, United Kingdom, because I have my hierarchical database set up like that. Right, so that's what we'll export. Um, also, I'll just show you another quick one here. If I select all these photographs by going Command A or Control A, you'll see an asterisk after the keyword name there. That means that that keyword, for instance, beach, is not common to all of the images. So that's what that asterisk means. And another little heads up, you can have uh, more than one keyword, or the same keyword, appearing in two parts of a hierarchical structure, i.e. if you had a crane on a building site, it could be building site, down the tree, crane, or it could be bird and then crane, because crane means bird or an actual crane on a building site. So you can do that, and Lightroom's clever enough to recognise when you do that, and it will prompt you for which one you want. So there's all little things, that, you know, bells and whistles, that you probably won't come across that often. Now, I want get, to get back to my original photo. And whilst I'm here, guys, this, this is slightly digressing. If you want to select photos in Lightroom, you obviously can use the Shift key. And now I select that one there. Notice it's gone a darker grey than the original selected one. This is about the compare view, and I'll cover that in another video. But it... I don't like the way things are selected in Lightroom because you often don't know what's selected and sometimes you make mistakes because of it. Just remember the first one selected is always the lighter one and then the other ones are darker. Now, that's called a contiguous selection because it's next door. Non-contiguous means it's not next door. Uh, so with the command or control key pressed, if I went to this image and clicked on it, I've made a non-contiguous selection. It, the three images are not all next door to each other. Um, if I included the other two with a shift key like that, that's a contiguous selection. They're all joined together. That's all it means. Anyway, let's get back to my image. I've kind of shown you that. It's not too much to remember there because, you know, autocomplete, etc. And what will export, I virtually know what's going to export because I've got my keywording list set up in a certain way. Now, if I double click on animal, it hasn't got include on export ticked. It's got export containing keywords ticked, and I don't like that box, but I leave it on by default. Export synonym, what's a synonym? It's any word that means the same as another word. So animal could be, you could put, well, I can't put mammal because animal covers lots of things, but you get the drift, guys. I can, I can put something in there that means the same as animal. Synonyms, you can use other ways. I use it sometimes, not necessarily for words that mean exactly the same, but stuff I want included with that keyword. I'm being a bit crafty, slightly not a synonym, but words that are reasonably similar. Right, so export synonyms, I normally would have that ticked. Um, and also, by default, the first three ones are always ticked. Person is about facial recognition. It came about in 2014. And uh, 
it will tell Lightroom if you tick this box that that word animal is actually a person. So if you have Pete Smith in there, well, Lightroom's not going to know that Pete Smith is a name or John Doe or whatever. So you have to tell Lightroom it's a person. Now, I've obviously tagged or keyworded all my people photographs. So I would have to go and get all my people photographs up, probably select them all at once and then tick person. Then I would probably start the fresh facial recognition and make my life a lot easier. But I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but that's what it means in this context. Right, it, of course I can always create one here like this. Um, before I right click, I'll just show you. When you hit the plus sign there, what it's gonna do is ask you if you wanna put it inside animal down the hierarchical tree, add to the selected photograph. So yeah, it's just, so many ways to do keywording in Lightroom, it's almost too much. If I right click on something like birthdays, um, let's, no, let's right click on holiday. You can add this keyword to selective photo, remove this keyword from selective photo if it was there, edit the keyword tag, convert keywords to person keywords, facial recognition, create a keyword tag. If I did that here now, I get that same thing as I got when I pressed the plus sign. So there you go. And if I right click again, keep going down, I can create a keyword tag, create a keyword tag inside holiday down the tree, delete it, put new keywords inside this keyword. In other words, once you start creating keywords in this session, it will add them below, below that keyword in the tree. So it saves you having to think about that every time. So be careful about that one. I lost that a bit there, sorry guys. Um, put this, uh, yeah, put, new person keywords inside this keyword. Again, you can put a person inside the person keyword. Use this as a keyword shortcut. Um, that's when you set a shortcut and you want to spray it on or use Shift K to add it to the image. Export these photos as a catalog. As it sounds, any image with that keyword in, which is holiday, I can export out of my catalog with the photographs and hand to someone else. I hope that's given you an overview and you'll see a little um, asterisk sign there saying that this holiday is only uh, limited to this image. There's a lot of things you, you'll see with Lightroom. Sometimes you'll see a plus against keywords, which means it's the keyword shortcut as well. So if I set up um, a keyword shortcut, it's quite a long keyboard shortcut for that as well. If I set up holiday now, and return on it, you also see a plus sign, and that's telling me the keyword shortcut is also inside holiday. I can't think of what else to add here. Um, as you see, my structure is this, that the top part of the tree doesn't normally be exported, and I have a proper hierarchical structure, especially under places, as I do a lot of, um, a lot of landscapes. And when you see a dash, that means that photograph there um, the keywords are somewhere in this drop down here. So that's all it's telling the little dash. I've told you about the stuff on the right, I believe. I have, I'm sure I have. I forget because this is such a vast subject. There are 104 photographs in my catalogue with the word United Kingdom in them. And if I hit the arrow, I'll get them all up. Be careful of that because it will take you away from where you are now. Right, I can't think of anything else I need to add here, except that if you're gonna do a database or keyword list, you're better off with a hierarchical one. Right, let's go over to metadata and set keyword shortcut. We've done that already. Now I can add another one in here. I can add holiday, I can add vacation. I could even have vacation as a synonym inside holiday. Uh, now vacation doesn't exist. So once I set it, it should appear. Actually it won't appear until I add it to a photograph. Anyway, now I could add it to this image because in fact I was on holiday when I took this image. So shift K, will add that to the image. Assign keywords, holiday and vacation. Let's have a look. Where is holiday? Now, if you do a search here, yeah, holiday is inside events. There you go. So you can search by in that box there and it would just uh, show you the, the stuff related to holiday and it's inside events. And as I say, holiday is a keyword shortcut, hence the plus sign and the asterisk means not all the images in the grid view have the word holiday in them. Right, Command K will put you in the keyword entry box. No matter where you are in the library view, Command K will put you straight into that box. Escape, out of it. Right, 
enable painting and this is about the painter tool which you can paint keywords on now I've already set my shortcuts which are holiday and vacation I can add one here by going comma something else I can press on the shift key and I can see my keyword sets and I can pick something from keyword sets to add like cliff uh, you've got to keep the shift key pressed down stuff that's it um, you can remove stuff so I can remove stuff as well now I can now with the spray can spray that on those images I can mouse down and spray it now you have to be on the picture itself to spray so you have to be careful as I said it's like using a shotgun to kill a fly so I'd hold down the mouse key and drag across I'm on a Wacom tablet a Wacom tablet all I have to do is press down and drag across and it will add those keywords once you've finished you can go up to metadata and untick or click on enable painting or you can bring the, the paint can back to its little circular holder here bang so yeah uh, painting can be useful but be careful with it because you you often over spray I think I've covered everything I can possibly think of but I'm sure there's probably something I've forgotten keywording is absolutely essential without keywords you will not find your images uh, please 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 keyword don't worry too much about your hierarchical structure at first just keyword and then also um, use stars and we I think most of us get stars have a way of keywording and develop it and stick with it okay guys I think I've covered everything here I hope I haven't gone on too long I'm absolutely dying of heat exhaustion I hope you got something from it thank you very much